Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we set up our Arc Furnace, another one of these immersive engineering multi blocks. This gave us access to the industrial leather and then let us craft the scarab body, which we used with a bunch of resources from Roots uh, as well as some Twilight Forest progression to give us access to the Autumn Dimension. And while optional, we also beat every single Twilight boss. But today is going to be very exciting as we're going to finally be able to get access to Applied Energistics. Generally, when I get access to AE2, I like to take some time to develop the base. And I've been thinking about the way this is developing and I'm not super happy with it. I think at this point, it's a good time to change it. So after some consideration, we're going to rip all this down eventually and we're going to rebuild. Just trust me, it's going to all work out in the end. But first, let's actually unlock Applied Energistics. So for that, we need a meteorite compass, which is a very simple craft. And now to craft the processors for Applied Energistics, we need all of the presses. Oh, looks like there's some extra presses in here as well. Huh, I guess this is for the extra cells stuff. Interesting, okay. Alright, so I just took a quick dip into the Autumn Dimension. We're going to save progression in that space for another day. And we now have all of the presses that we need to continue. We are missing two, but those are the extra cells one, and we won't be using these for a little while. So next up, we need some inscribers, which are very easy to craft in this pack. We have lots of steel by now. We may end up short on some service, but I did go mining between the episodes. I managed to get about two stacks. It's somewhere in these chests. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, our storage system is a complete mess right now. But that's all going to be fixed today. So there is our inscriber, and I think we'll actually set up a few of these things. Yeah, much later in the pack we do get access to this mass inscriber, which is nice because they are a bit of a pain to automate. But let's just craft, uh, I guess we'll do five for now. So yeah, we'll do five. Oh wait, well I guess we made six, <laughs> oops. Alright, so I've just set us up a very very temporary setup here just to get us going. So I have our five inscribers placed here, it's a little, it's a little hard to see the way I have this set up. But these take input from the sides. Each one has its own inscriber press inside. Actually, this could get jammed the way I have this set up. All right, we'll address that in a second. But first of all, we have run out of power. And the reason we're run out of power is because we don't quite have enough seed production here to keep up with the squeezer. So for now, I've just crafted a bunch of the extra canola that we had in this drawer. And we're going to manually fill this in. But when we set up AE2, we will have to address our power issues uh, as AE2 obviously does take power to run. Ah, so for some reason this thing isn't actually outputting its plant oil. I wonder why that is, I didn't actually change anything here. Let's just try and replace the pipe. Alright, well that was weird. I don't know what happened there. Well, this at least gives us some power here. So we should be able to automate, well not automate, but <laughs> create some of our processors. I'm going to put 24 of each material in. Yep, this starts getting our processors made. Well, actually we need the silicon, and how do we make silicon in this pack? For silicon, it looks like we can smelt either ceres quartz or nether quartz dust. Or we can actually crush sand into silicon. So this is probably the most efficient way to do it. So let's get some extra sand. And we are going to crush all this stuff. Alright, so we got the engineering and the logic. We also need calculation. And the calculation requires the pure ceres quartz, which we have to make... I mean, either we can throw the seeds in water, but this takes like a million years. <laughs> or we can use the enrichment chamber. And for this we can just throw in some Certus Quartz dust, and this will give us our pure Certus. And the pure Certus we're going to put in the inscriber for the processors. Then we're going to use the last inscriber to put everything together. And we get the processors, which automatically go into this chest. So I'm going to make a batch of each of these, and then we can move on with the storage drives. Alright, so I have made up a batch of each of the processors, which should give us the quest. And it's actually the next day for me here, and I spent a little bit too long last night setting up this. So this is going to be our new block palette and our new base layout. I did record most of the building of this, but it was actually just me like breaking, replacing blocks, trying to experiment with stuff to get something that I was actually happy with. Because over there, something just didn't quite sit quite right. So now I am really excited about the way this is going to be turning out. And I have some plans on how, how we're going to be expanding this. So the blocks we've used here is spruce wood planks. We have the basalt bricks that we were using over there. And this yellower block is limestone from the autumn dimension with the small limestone brick variant along the borders. And I think this this combination of blocks is going to work out very nicely. 
I've also started laying out our main control room in here. When I was playing interactions, I had all my control panels right in the center of a room like this. I don't really want to do that again since like when you're accessing your ME terminal, for example, you're always facing one way. So I think it's better to have it against a wall somewhere, which is what this 3x3 is going to be. But I didn't want the terminals too far from everything else, so they, they are still central. And it's not a long distance to have to travel to your terminals. And then each of these paths will lead off to probably different mods. We'll have one for like Thomcraft, Astro Sorcery, a big machine processing room, probably one for a farm as well. But yeah, as I mentioned, we are going to be ripping out everything here, <laughs> but that's going to take some time. Maybe we'll do a stream for that, I'm not sure yet. But let's continue on with our Applied Energistics crafting. So one of the most important parts of the Applied Energistics system is the controller. And I believe channels here are enabled, so we're going to do the same setup that I had in interactions with the subnet. And I'll try to explain that as I set it up. But first of all, we have to craft some of these, which take some f more flux. And I think the pure flux is going to be more efficient since we get two for every dust, right? And then we can just enrichment chamber this into the, f the pure one. And I realized that the Certus is probably the same when we're making the calculation processors. But this also takes the engineering ones, which we have 24 of, and some skystone blocks which spawned as the meteors in the autumn dimension, so we have a couple of stacks of this. We will have to make some more flux crystals, but I did already charge up some more Certus Quartz, so we should have a stack in here, yep. And we can throw all this in water, and this will give us, what, two stacks? And we're going to crush this down to give us the crushed variant, and then we're going to turn that into seeds, and then I guess we'll put it through the enrichment chamber. And we should also look at upgrading some of these machines. We have unlocked some of the upgrades for it. Yeah, so we can make the speed upgrades just with some steel and some osmium. But we're going to also need the energy upgrades as putting the speed upgrades in does increase the power cost. So to even out, we do need these ones, which it looks like it takes Osco glass, I think is what this is. Yeah, it does take Osco glass. And that has to be made with osmium, glowstone and refined obsidian. All right, and there is our pure flukes which we are going to use to craft our ME controllers. And I'm going to craft nine of these things to begin with. And I'll show you the reason why in a second. So there is nine. And our quest. And the next quest is just telling us about channels here. Yeah, lots and lots of useful information here if you're looking for it. But to store our items in, we need a disk drive and a storage component. The disk drive isn't too bad. It's, well, actually it is. <laughs> it's four radiator blocks, which is very expensive, actually. And the, but the energy acceptor isn't bad. And we'll need an extra one of these to place in world as well. We're also going to need a bunch more glass cable, which is also used in quite a lot of the crafting recipes. But this should allow us to get two energy acceptors, apparently an achievement, <laughs> and our disk drive. I should also say at this point, I am aware that we cannot get all crafting until I think it's chapter 13, right? Yeah, it's all the way over here. So we still have... Six more chapters to complete before we can get auto crafting. So now for the storage components, let's see how expensive these are in this pack. Okay, conductive iron, uh, certus quartz, and a logic processor. And conductive iron is redstone iron. To upgrade them to 4k, we can actually... Oh, it's more conductive iron. This actually seems very cheap compared to the interactions one, the recipes that I'm used to. But I guess it has changed slightly from default. And at this point, iron is not a problem. I think our excavator has been running a long time by now. We are up to 67 stacks of iron and we have 11 stacks of gold here and actually this is double because we can double every piece of iron ore. So I'm not afraid to use up some iron, it's just redstone is still kind of expensive for us at this point. But we're going to use our arc furnace since it is a bit faster and we'll make a stack of conductive iron. Alright so I've been doing some grinding of resources, there is our 10 1k ME storage components. And we have enough for 10 1km. In fact, before we do this, because these don't stack, let's actually just leave them as the components and we'll make them once we're ready for them. So for us to be able to progress, we're going to need a lot more Certus Quartz, as I believe I'm down to the last nine. Yeah, this is all I have, so we should address that. Alright, so I went on a very small mining trip, we got over a stack of Certus Quartz, which I'm hoping should be enough for us to progress. Alright, so the next thing we need is some Annihilation Cores, and we also need the opposite ver version of the Formation Cores. 
which does take some more flux dust. I'm waiting on the, the crusher, actually. I've, I've been waiting on this thing for quite a while, as it's very, very slow. I wonder if it's worth upgrading this thing. You know what? Yeah, let's take a detour and quickly set up this Osgo glass production, which is what we need for the upgrades. So to get Osgo glass, we need glowstone ingots, which is made in the osmium compressor, which means we have to make one of these machines. We haven't made this yet. The osmium ingots is just regular things we get from ore, and refined obsidian is also made in the osmium compressor. So we're going to make up some more enriched gum, and that should give us enough for our osmium compressor. Actually, we need this advanced control circuit yet. We haven't made this. So how do we get energetic alloy? Gold, redstone, glowstone? Alright, well, like everything, we'll batch craft this. I think we'll make a stack of this stuff. And this can just go in our arc furnace. Alright, we'll make some advanced control circuits. And craft two osmium compressors, I think. Need some more buckets. <laughs> Not quite 37 buckets. And we'll craft two osmium compressors. So these machines, I'm just going to stick down in this temporary room. This will be torn down eventually, but it's just that this is where we have our power right now, so for the time being we'll just extend this cable out and put down two osmium compressors. And it looks like we are out of power again. Uh, we're going to have to address this very, very soon. But for now I'm just going to keep manually feeding this squeezer. And in the first osmium compressor we're just going to batchcraft a stack of this infused glowstone. But it's a very strange sound coming from that thing. Which will give us our glowstone ingots, and the other part of Osgo glass we need is refined obsidian. Which we need refined obsidian dust for, which is made in the metallurgic infuser. Similar to the way we done the compressed carbon with the steel. Except this time it takes diamonds, and I think we'll actually make another enrichment chamber for this. And metallurgic infuser combo. So there is another metallurgic infuser. And we'll also make another enrichment chamber, which requires these growth accelerators. And I noticed there was actually a quest that opened up for these, so let's make sure to pick these up. And then craft it into our enrichment chamber. So these two machines I've set up on the end, again, super temporary. But with this we're going to put in our diamonds, to give us the compressed diamonds. That's going to go into the infuser where we mix with obsidian. Which we can actually pick up as a quest reward for the osmium compressor. And we have to use obsidian dust for this, so which has to go through the enrichment chamber. So I guess we're still waiting on slow machines <laughs> either way here. And then once we refine it in the infuser, we're going to put it in the compressor. Then we're going to put all of that into the arc furnace to give us our first Osgo glass. Well, we're going to be waiting on this Osgo glass a while because of our power issues. So I think in that time we have got the rest of the stuff we need for applied energistics. So let's start setting that up, even if we won't have the power to run it right now. So we are waiting on some more flukes for the formation cores. And you know what, I think we'll temporarily turn off this excavator, as this does hog quite a lot of power. And we got more processors, so there's the rest of the formation cores. And with these, we want to make our ME terminal. It's a shame that it can't be the crafting terminal, but I'll take what we can get at this point. And, oh, we need more processors, okay. And we have our ME terminal. Alright, so I made up a bunch of P2P tunnels. I made 24 to begin with. These actually aren't too expensive. Again, the flux cost is a problem for us at the moment, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not too bad. I also made up some more glass cables, and I think we've got everything we need. So the way we're going to set this up is we're going to have a subnet to control our ME channels. And I would like to have these controllers in the middle here. I think also we should maybe raise it up a block. Maybe three blocks. Yeah, I think we'll do it at this height here. So we're going to place a 3x3 three three with the center left open. Since I think if you place one here, it's invalid. And then the ninth controller is going to go right here. Then we're going to place P2P tunnels on all of these controller sides. But I think for now, since we don't have enough P2Ps, we're just going to place on the bottom side here. But eventually we can cover every face of this controller with the P2Ps. So now we have to connect it to this little subnet down here. And I think we will actually go and craft some of the covered cable. So covered cable in this pack is super cheap compared to interactions. <laughs> it's just one glass cable and some wool. So I have been shearing our sheep every now and then. I was beginning to even wonder if it was necessary to set up the sheep farm. But I'm really glad I did at the start here. So we're going to cover some of this cable. In fact, that's not going to be enough, is it? Hmm. But we do have some more wool. Let's just make it all into covered cable. And then we'll make it smart cable with some redstone glowstone. And this is expensive for this part of the game. But it's not a cost that we have to incur very often, and I would like to set it up properly the first time. So let's get some smart cable, and I'm assuming we can make it dense. Okay, how do we make dense cable? Oh, there's no recipe from smart cable to dense. Oh, no. Yeah, we have to go from the covered variant. Oh, 
Well, that was a mistake. We can't convert it back. Well, the quest for that does actually give us some more materials to make some, some more dense cable. So let's actually just do that. <laughs> Even if we can only afford one right now. Alright, so everything is hooked up. We are still missing power for this thing. And I think we're going to have to address our power issues before we progress any further. So to power this AE system, I would actually like to use the thermoelectric generators. I'm not sure exactly how much RF these things can produce. But with these, they are completely passive. And we have a lot of eulorium. And we can get packed ice from the twilight forest. And we're still going to be keeping our diesel generator over there and expanding out our farm. But I would like to have our AE system power separate for the time being. So I'm going to make a bunch of these thermoelectric generators and we'll set this up to power our applied energistic system. But before we do that, some of our Osco glass is finished, which allows us to make some of these energy upgrades. And we'll make some of the speed upgrades to go along with it. And while we're at it, we may as well make some of the muffling upgrades to reduce some of the noise in that place. <laughs> But since we can't afford any more, we can just put them in the machines that we're actually using. So these will take up to 8 upgrades each. But you can take them out anytime you want. And you can see here, the more energy upgrades you add, the greater the effect. So with 8 speed upgrades, we are at 10x speed. And we're also at 10x energy discount. And we'll also put in the muffling upgrades. And I forgot this actually takes 4 to completely silence the machine as well. Alright, well now i got a bunch of components to craft. We need to make these vacuum tubes, which is some more nickel and invar. I'll have to make some more of that up. And also constantan, we need some more of this, which is copper and nickel. And the rest is just steel, some treated wood, and some electrum. Alright, so I've crafted up enough materials to make 9 thermoelectric generators, which I think should be enough for us to get started. We're going to power these with some eulorium and packed ice. I think I'll need to grab some more of this stuff though. But now the question is, where do we want to put these things? I don't really want to have them in another temporary setup. I want to, from now on, start setting things up in their permanent locations. Because <laughs> I've changed my mind on this base too many times already. So I think what we're going to do actually is build out a little room on this side of the base. I would like to have this go down a level, and I think we'll actually clear out all of this space underneath, and we'll have lower levels to this as well. It's a little bit hard to explain, so why don't I just build this, and then I'll show you afterwards. Alright, so I've been doing a bit of building. It's not much so far, but it's a start at least. <laughs> so we have all of our thermoelectric generators in this room here. Stick some lights down so we can actually see. And I actually couldn't find in the configs how much gen uh, power these actually generate. It just says 1.0, so I'm assuming that's some sort of multiplier between the eulorium and packed ice. So I'm going to try out MV cable. I'm assuming this is going to be enough th throughput on this. So what I think I might do for these is put a capacitor maybe up here somewhere. Just for the time being, since we won't be using these immersive engineering wires forever. Actually, we need some more connectors, so let's just do this for a proof of concept first of all. So if we hook all of these up to our capacitor over here. Oh wait, we, hold on, we need some relays. Alright, so instead we're going to put a relay on this wall. Hopefully we can actually connect here. We can. And we're going to connect everything else up to the relays. We'll set the bottom of this capacitor to energy input. So now, are you getting power? Oh, I think the problem is we can't have our packed ice and eulorium in this configuration. Because I, I tried it over there and it did work, and so I was confused why these weren't generating any power. But I think we need the two eulorium blocks on the same side, and then the packed ice also on the same side. If, if that makes any sense. Oh, come on, zombies, give me a break. So yeah, we have to do something like this. I'm hoping that we're going to see some power in this capacitor. And we are, okay. Alright, so now what we're going to do just temporarily is we're going to run the wires over to our ME controller over there. So we have another connection on the top of the capacitor going into this relay. And then I've placed down our energy acceptor which allows us to input energy into our 82 network. We'll put a connector on the top. 
and we'll connect this up with some more cable to the relay and we should see this controller block light up hey there we go but we do also have to get some power to this one as yeah the p2p channels do not transfer any power so to fix that what we can do is have some quartz fiber here and in fact we'll have to cable anchor all of these as well so the cable anchors and quartz fiber prevent channels from passing through and then once we connect this up this one should receive some power start to light up and what we can actually do is put this one back and take away these two cables since we do have one connection here and you, as you can see here we have eight channels in use on this smart cable so basically the regular smart cables can only transmit eight channels and each p2p tunnel counts as one channel so we have eight p2p's here which is the maximum that we can transfer with one smart cable once we need more p2p connections obviously these will those will go on the other sides of the controller blocks but at that point we will have to connect to this dense cable down here and be careful not to connect to these ones here so in fact what i'm going to do is put some cable anchors down because we don't want any future connections to connect to these cables so the p2p tunnels as i mentioned earlier is a way to condense channels down so effectively it's like you're plugging in a dense cable into the controller block as each side of the controller can output 32 channels so all of these p2p connections are now going into this subnet and now when we want channels anywhere in our base we just have to run some cable from this side of the controller so eventually we will swap this out for some dense cable but since we can't afford it yet let's run some smart cable over to where our control room is going to be so that's us out next to where the terminal is however we do need a p another p2p connection on the output side of this so let me go and craft one of those and we'll also need a memory card to configure our p2p connections so we're going to place our p2p on the output side and then from here we have 32 channels available but since again we don't have any dense cable we can only use eight that connect to the smart cable which we're just going to put in our disk drive and now we have to link these p2p tunnels so we can pick any p2p here on the controller block and we'll pick the one that's closest so we shift right click to configure the memory card and then on the output side we can just regular right click and you can see in the tooltip it says linked on the output side and it also says the frequency so now the terminal is turned on we need to craft our storage drives here though so we'll use those storage components we crafted earlier into the storage housings there we go storage cells there's 10 of those and finally <laughs> we have applied energistics oh yes <laughs> so now we can stick all of our items in here and i want this on standard search keep yeah this is the one i want to use sort by number of items yeah like this so now comes the tedious task of moving over all of our storage over here and fitting it into this terminal <laughs> um what do we actually have in terms of chest transporters in this pack do we have the dolly we do but we need oh we need ender alloy really all right well i guess we can't get that is there any other options we can get so from what i can see there's no way for us to transport our chests without breaking them all so that's something i'll probably do between the episodes to try to get all of our storage moved over and then at that point we can start ripping all this base up but I think we're going to wrap up here for today. Doing uh, daily uploads means that I can't always get as much progression done as I would have liked. But we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I'm uh, super excited for where this base is going to go now. And I, I really can't wait to get this expanded. Let me know what you think about the new block palette. I definitely prefer it. And this time also I wanted to challenge myself to use not just squares. And I mean, I know this is Minecraft, but <laughs> if you saw my Omni Factory base especially, that was... A lot of cubes everywhere so i wanted to go for a circle in the middle hopefully the p2p explanations made sense if not just um, leave a question in the comments or perhaps join the discord and just feel free to ask and i'll try to help you out if you need help with that i should have some more time tomorrow so i'll be able to finish off the building for those thermal electric generators and tomorrow i think we'll come back and we'll build out our machine room so i want to get all this torn down and of course I'll move all of the storage area over into our Applied Energistics network. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of Divine Journey 2.